There's like a little, what is that? So the second we tried to shoot day five, we hit a snag. The problem is that once again, we think the issue is our wireless kit and uh, it's not. We killed yet another lav, presumably from having them clipped to my waist and then having tension on them here because the issue is that, and we've, we've actually killed one of these before too, one of these Sennheiser ones, and then we just killed our countryman. The issue is that the cable's reinforced here and then they just break here. So it feels like the higher you go and reinforce it, you're just gonna break it there. So I don't know what the solution is. It's ridiculous. Uh, just, just add tape to the entirety of the cable so that it's just one solid line. I have no idea what this is. Mate? No, it's not from Mate. Apparently Mate bought me another, uh, another Blu-ray though. Oh, this is a notebook. 15 inch gaming notebook. And it's not broken. <laughs> This is the whole room water cooling project from Minus Tech Tips. This is crazy. How long has it been since we've actually worked on this mess? Four months? Something like that. So uh, we are finally back at it and finishing the whole room water cooling loop is gonna have some challenges that we didn't have the first time around because now we have to figure out how to finish people's systems. Like I don't even have the, I, I don't even have the, like the, the tubing finished for some people's systems without interrupting them working. Or at least pretending to be working. They're actually eating. We are at putting the other ends of the quick disconnects onto the computers because in order to work on the loop, we need to have people's systems running disconnected. disconnected. Right. I would never recommend filling the water cooling loop of a system that's running while <laughs> it's running. I believe my red is already full. And uh, let's find out if my hot swap system works or not. I would recommend saving your work. Oh, well this is smarter than what I was doing. I just filled the rad with the whole room system. Uh-huh. Right, that's way better because now, okay, well right now your system is in trouble, but. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> so now we don't have to worry about bleeding. Really, there it is. Oops. Okay, well we'll go around and we'll do the CPU swaps uh, later, I guess. Are we short of CPU? Taryn, can I find out what CPU you have? Uh, Very quickly. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna try and do this right this time. <laughs> How are your temps doing? Because your water is not moving right now. Uh, it does seem to be going up. Okay. Pretty quickly. And you are swapped off. Have it look now. It's going up. Going up. Yep. Holy crap. <laughs> uh, okay. Just a sec. Just a sec. Everything's okay. Oh, oh wait. It's no. Nope, it's still going. I know. <laughs> You're not hooked up to anything right now. Okay. <sighs> we need coolant flow. <sighs> Are we going down? Yeah. Wow. Like 20 degrees. Yep. Good. Um, so your pump is it on? <laughs> your pump doesn't seem to be doing anything. All right then. So. The good, the positive takeaway here is that the whole room pump is working. <laughs> is that plugged in? I thought so. But we're gonna double check. The pump is connected to the pump bone. The pump bone's connected to the case bone. The case bone's connected to nothing. <laughs> So we gotta plug in your pump. You know what? We probably pulled it out during the car semi swap. Yeah. And never plugged it back in. Probably didn't need to plug it back in. <laughs> or felt like we didn't need to plug it back in. Nah, I'm pretty sure we just forgot. Well, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. Especially when they're me. Okay. Oh, yours already has fittings on it. Yeah, I put them on there when I uh, felt like it. No, you didn't. <laughs> Uh, what color tubing is that supposed to be? This clear. Mm. There's definitely a lot of bubbles in the loop at the moment. 
if it's just that tubing getting all grossed out, or if it's the blocks. Yeah, the blocks seem fine. It's just ugly, ugly cooling. Like it's, you can actually see. Um, so just, just to keep in mind, there are things on top of this PC. <laughs> oh, well, there probably aren't anymore. Do you can can you see that okay? Noise? Um, no, that's probably there's some air in your block now because we're messing around with the loop. No. Merkel, it's probably okay. But all my screens went blue. They did? No. no. Oh my god, why do I ever <laughs> listen to you? One day I'm gonna tell you something legitimate and you're gonna be like, oh, who are you? And then, like, and you're gonna die. Back. You're gonna lose like your left pinky or something. Well, at least it's my left pinky. Okay. For the first time since we set it up, the whole room water cooling system is off. I mean, completely off. The fans have been off since about the first week. So after all that work to have all the systems hooked up to a whole room water cooling system, we have successfully disconnected them all. Yay! Clap, 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 clap. But there's a purpose. There's a purpose. Because this is our new pump which we will actually be installing in addition to our existing pump. Now, I ordered or a 2 MDQSC. I ordered a matching one for our other one. They actually sent me a 3 MDQSC. So this one's slightly more powerful, something I didn't really want. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I think that's not really recommended for serial pump operation, but we don't really have much of a choice at this point. So uh, this one has slightly higher head mm. pressure as well as a slightly higher flow rate than the other one. So uh, off we go. So one issue that we've had uh, is that one of the fittings on this pump has actually been leaking. See right here? There's a, uh, yeah, there's definitely a leak there. So we've actually had some corrosion of the base and uh, it's been kind of nasty. This is our anti-vibration pad that makes it slightly less loud. All right, so that means we have to figure out how to close off these. Now I have one idea for one side. Like, is this gonna work? What if I just mush it? Locking swivel jaw. This thing is stuck to the other one. Okay. It doesn't move. There you go. <laughs> Yay. Thought I was an idiot. I mean, I might still be an idiot. What I'm about to do with it is idiotic. So I'm trying to mush the uh, Mush the tubing here. Water will rush from this opening on both, on both ends. And I don't know how much I'll be able to do to stop it here. Wait, no, it should be fine because in theory I've blocked them. Right, so what I need to do is plan to do this one first because I suspect this one is less likely to leak as much. So I want to pull this off. How much pressure is in there? I don't know. It's a mystery. It worked. Wow. Okay. Let's find out. Uh, let's find out if this is going to hold. Only one way to know for sure. Hippity boop. Done. It looks like there's a little bit of corrosion on this uh, fitting right here, but it might not be a big deal. There is definitely some crap in here. That is that is an extremely that is an extremely bad thing. So that's what's staining the inside of the tubing. I think it's coming from here, which could be a very, very bad thing. Steel reservoir should be fine if you have, uh, if you're running, basically we're just running automotive antifreeze in here, but it looks like something about it is not working. Like it's not obviously just full of sediment, I wonder if all of that gunk settled reasonably well, because we didn't notice any buildup on the blocks either. Which is good, because it means it won't affect cooling performance, but um, 
I'd still like to have things cleaner than that if it can be. So here are the floaties I'm talking about and how they're kind of mushy, which leads me to believe that there's some kind of life form as opposed to just being um, like rust build up. And also kind of greasy, but then that could just be the fluid, I don't know. Sea monkeys. Yeah, not what we were trying to do here. What this means now is that we either have to accept that there's stuff growing in our loop and write off all the gear that's attached to it as contaminated until it's cleaned, or we have to take everything apart, replace all the tubing, clean all the blocks, and replace this reservoir in order to start fresh. So uh, given that we're moving in two months, we are gonna go for the temporary solution, um, which is flush the res, flush the loop, um, go much, much heavier on the, on the antifreeze this time, and, uh, and, and kind of live with it for another couple months before we move. Experience silent performance with the new Cooler Master Silencio 652S. Minimalist design, maximum compatibility. Click now to learn more. Well, I don't know if our hose still works. This kind of fell. Okay. Well, the stuff that's on the lip here... See, that's funny. It seems kind of greasy. You know, I wonder if it... I wonder... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not... Maybe it's not living. Maybe it's just something left over in here from manufacturing. Uh, we didn't have a lot of options in terms of reservoirs, but I can see we made the wrong choice. Oh, grody. That doesn't look like a coating. And it's like, it's all over the, the upper walls as well. And I remember looking into it, like there was nothing on there before. But I'm not sure what we managed to introduce to the system that grows in an antifreeze water mixture. Maybe some of the viewers will have some insight. They all appear to be experts on this kind of project anyway. Like coming into today, I was thinking we might need some kind of a filter in line or something, something like that. But this is clearly just beyond filtration. Putting this back in the loop doesn't seem to be an option. So, what I think we're going to do, as stupid as this is, um, is we're going to leave the loop open for now with, like, buckets. Yep, we're going bucket water cooling. Um, because I don't want to, especially now that I've disturbed whatever's in here, we're going to get chunks going through the loop, and if one of those chunks ends up in a water block, the cooling performance of that system is hooped. I don't think that's happened yet. I don't have a reason to believe that's happened yet, looking at the temperatures of people's systems. So uh, we, can't, we can't risk that happening. So then what we'll need to do is we'll need to get a replacement reservoir for when we move. And um, when we move, we will have to we'll have to do something. We'll have to clean out the system. We'll have to clean out the tubing and blocks and start fresh. The radiators are going to be a real problem. We may need to just replace them. So while Ed took a break to uh, copy footage, I figured I'd get our pumps prepped. It turns out. The reason it was leaking was way back when I, uh, when I initially used this pump. I apparently didn't know what Teflon tape was because I apparently didn't use it. So that would be why that fitting was leaking. Um, I also spent a little bit of time Googling and while, and while uh, automotive antifreeze does indeed contain an anti-corrosive, which is good, that's what I was really concerned about. What it does not contain, and I had, I guess, assumed it contains, is a biocidal agent. So that is why our loop is full of what is now definitely organic matter. I not only have no flux, I, I have no solder. I, I do have to go to the You should probably have a sandbag on your ladder. Like that but the sound means it's not working. That's not to put that in.